Hello everyone, it's January and we've all had time now to settle into the new year um, and it's time that we now all start looking forward to what we want to achieve in 2017. So I'm basically going to walk you guys through a four step plan of how I've prepared my 2017, also wrapped up my 2016 as well. So keep watching if you guys want to see how I've made sure I've planned for success in 2017 and how I'm going to make those successes happen. So let's get started. Step number one is to really look at what happened in 2016. This means we are really looking at what went well, but also what didn't go so well. So if you are looking to look at focusing on your business, then you may look at what growth you had from the start of last year until the end of last year to give you an idea on how your business is currently performing. If, for example, you wanted to focus on a more personal target, for example, like losing weight, then you may look at where your main motivation came in last year. You might say to yourself, okay, I had a really great January, but when it came to February, I started losing a little bit of my focus. Um, you might say, okay, well, I lost, you know, a stone last year, which is great. Um, I was kind of better with my eating, but I need to do this. So it's really all about looking at what went well, what didn't go well, and analyzing the results of that. So once you've looked at what happened last year, this is when you can really look at what you want to do this year. And the reason it's so important to look at what you did last year is you want to make sure that you've set yourself achievable goals um, that are comfortable but may stretch you a little bit. You need to challenge yourself with this as well. So don't make it easy for yourself. Make it a bit of a challenge. Make it fun for you to do. So for example, if you made £15,000 in your business in 2016, you may say to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to stretch it to £20,000 this year or challenge yourself and aim for 25000 That's quite an achievable goal um, because you're looking at what you did last year and you're basing your growth on that. Another example, again I'm going to stick with the weight examples because they seem to just be popping to my mind right now. Um, another example would be if that you lost one stone last year, however you want to lose a stone and a half this year, um, that would be challenging yourself, pushing yourself to do that extra half, um, but it's not unachievable, it makes it quite a comfortable goal, um, but it is pushing you that little bit further as well. Now when we look at goals like this for the new year, it means that we're not just plucking things out of thin air, it means we're really looking at what we've done, where we want to go, and kind of just increasing what we want to do, what growth we want to make in whatever area of our life. And that way, like I said, it makes more sense than just kind of saying, okay, well, I don't really know what I did last year, but this is what I want to do this year. It means that you kind of have an idea of what you've done and where you're going. So step number three is my personal favorite step. So step number three is all about planning what you want to achieve, and it's writing down what you want to achieve. Now, I'm looking to the side because I'm grabbing my diary. Now. I spent a lot of money on this diary this year, I've got no problem saying that to you guys, um, but this is what's keeping me motivated. My one goal this year, and what kind of stopped me last year, is not getting distracted. So I'm one of these people where if I don't write things down, if I don't plan out my days, I will get distracted and I will find silly things to do here and there that, you know, like, I mean, not necessarily silly, I enjoy them, but I'll watch a documentary or five and then I realise the whole day's gone. So. This is helping me to be much more productive and therefore achieve my goal and it's helping me to plan things out. Um, this is what I'm doing, for example, if you know that you want to lose a little bit more weight this year, you might decide that you want to keep a food diary and that's how you're going to plan things out. Um, but this is my diary and I'm just going to show you a couple pages in this that I think are really good for helping you to plan for success. So the first one is this one here, which is my professional goals and my personal goals um, for 2016. 17 and that's kind of my first month's goals that I want to achieve so I've broken them down into sections and I've written it down I think when you write it down you've got that kind of focus on what you want to do and it gives you that kind of satisfaction of ticking it off the list and saying I focused on that and I achieved it so for me writing it down is really really important and again um, this was last week 
and I kind of wrote down here like all my to-do lists and I kind of ticked them off as I went, um, things like that. So for me, writing things down and keeping that focus is really important. So like I said, it can be a food diary, it can be how many days you're smoke free, it can be more productive like what I've done, but the most important thing is that you have to write it down. It has to be exciting, you have to want to write in it. So if like me, you want to spend a lot of money on a diary so you use it, go ahead. Or you might go find something um, for a lot cheaper but as long as you're excited about doing it and you kind of want to write it down and want to kind of um, bit by bit get to that goal I think that's the most important part of it. And another really important thing to mention as well, you may already have a diary for this year. Um, for example, if you want to go to the gym more, you want to get fitter, you want to get healthier, um, actually schedule it in. Make the time to schedule that in because when it's written down, you're more likely to follow those plans. It's basically what I'm saying in a very long-winded way. If you write it down, you are more likely to make the time to do it. So, quick recap. We have looked at what we did last year. We have looked at what we want to do this year. We've planned how we're going to do it this year. We've scheduled it in. And now we're going to look at creating new habits that are going to help it make it all a lot easier for us. So I mentioned before, I get distracted. I procrastinate. And for me, one of the habits I'm focusing on this year is introducing like to-do lists and actually making sure I tick them off because I think that's a big thing. Um, so for me, um, I'm kind of making sure that I do like my emails, my recordings, put all my files, organize everything, put that all away and do that that evening. So everything is done and it doesn't snowball and I don't end up putting things off. So that's the habit that I'm focusing on this year. But the really important thing is to introduce these habits and yes it's a conscious effort at first to do these habits it takes time to build them into the subconscious mind so they become automatic but once they're automatic um, you're not fighting yourself because it's all um, everything around you is going to be making it easier for you to achieve those goals so for example if you want to be a healthier eater you may find that you need to in the first place, research recipes, you need to go to the supermarket and spend a bit more time picking out foods that you might enjoy eating. But, you know, in a few weeks' time, when you go to Tesco or Sainsbury's or wherever you're going, um, you'll just automatically put those foods in there and you'll kind of have a more of an idea of what you want to do. Um, another example, again, with food, um, if you wanted to eat better again, these are, like, these, um ideas are just coming to my mind by the way um so you might find that it's easier for you to prep your food so you may say okay well in the evenings i'm going to prep my food for lunch tomorrow so that i don't end up picking on things or buying unhealthy things when i'm at work you may find that you just kind of end up um you know doing that in the evening so it's ready for the morning um, and again that would be a conscious thing at first to kind of make the time and the effort to go and make your lunch for the next day but eventually you'll just kind of get in the routine of doing it and again if you really wanted to you could track these and um, you could set rewards up for yourself I'm a very much a reward person I need to see things down and set a reward out for myself and um, to say well done for getting everything done that's the way that I work um, but you can track it if you wanted to if not that's fine but it's just another idea for you guys to do as well so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hearing all about my tips for really planning for a successful 2017. Remember, success doesn't happen on a whim, you have to make it happen. So I really look forward to seeing um, what you guys say on this plan, hearing what you guys um, think of it and how you're using it, how you're adapting it to help you reach your own personal goals. And here is to a very 2000 a very successful, rather, 2017 for all of us. Take care and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!